Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Fridays with Father. It's Friday, May 20th, and um, I'm outside again. Um, it's a warm morning. Uh, there's not much sun. There's a lot of cloud, and there's a nice breeze, um, and I think it's going to rain. But in the meantime, we'll just enjoy being out here with the birds, and I can hear the in the distance the sound of kids in the school, which is nice. But I'm here, you know, at the statue of the Blessed Mother here. We have in the, in the courtyard of the parish and I know people come to visit and pray and as we can see they brought her flowers and so you know I know that means a lot to people's faith um, and I thought that we would uh, you know have Fridays with Father here today because um, it's the month of May and probably the last opportunity that we will have to um, to spend time with her uh, officially I feel like um, and just a, an opportunity just for me to sort of mention a few points um, regarding uh, Blessed Mother and, and the great virtue and great blessing we have of having her in our life. Um, from an early age, most of us, you know, as Catholics, have those memories of our grandmother's homes or uh, our initial experiences of the faith in, in church or in, in school. And, it all, and Mary was a big feature, a prominent feature, in the same way that, you know, mothers are a prominent feature in our lives, you know. so. Uh, the fact that Blessed Mother, the Blessed Virgin, um, has been a prominent feature in our life should be no surprise. Yet, you know, life happens and uh, the world goes on and, and people get busy and stuff like that. And I, I know that, it's, you know, we can easily kind of drift <clears throat> or maybe forget and um, maybe lose a bit of focus, really, in just how important Mary is to our lives uh, as Catholics, our life of faith. So here with her today and I suppose the point that really kind of springs to mind today when I think about the Blessed Virgin Mary is just how welcoming she was, um, welcoming to the great news that uh, that she would bear you know God in her womb and uh, that she would bring forth into the world the person of Jesus you know God made man for each one of us and uh, and how she dealt with that really um, you know, it, it, we, we all know the story of the Annunciation and, uh, and how she was, as a human being, I mean, there were concerns and almost like a fear there, um, but the great trust, you know, that, that it would be okay. The, the acknowledgement that obviously, I suppose, that things would change, her life would change, but the great trust in God um, really, I think, is an important part of anybody's sense of welcome hospitality is um, whether we trust that uh, God will do good things and can do good things through each one of us uh, and through the, the church and through the faith that we have in, in Jesus Christ. So so Mary, um, really, in terms of like a person who, who was welcoming and hospitable and loving and trusting, you can't get better than her. You can't get better than her. So, you know, when I think today about the, the idea of welcome, um, it kind of ties in in some ways nicely with what we're trying to do here at Church of the Holy Spirit and what we will be doing in the months ahead. But we're celebrating, you know, uh, 50 years, I suppose, of faith. And, um, and we're praying for renewal. And we're praying for a great new renewal in our sense of, um, of community and faith. And I suppose we're hoping and praying that the church community will grow that through the power of the holy spirit through you know working through each one of us and through the prayers of the blessed virgin you know more people will come and this parish will grow and we will enjoy another 50 years of, of faith here in this place you know um but i suppose the thing we must be clear about it's 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 never it's not just it's not a certain thing that that's going to happen is it i mean it's not a sure thing. None of us really knows. And I know that talking to some of you, you know, um, uh, about, you know, the 50 years that this parish has been here and what will come next, there's always that kind of like slight concern, you know, well, who's going to replace us? You know, who's going to be here when we're gone? And there is a concern, I think, from the older element in our community. Well, you know, we're not getting any younger where are all the young families? Where are the young people? Um, these are all good concerns and important concerns for each one of us as we consider and reflect on our present um, 
reality here at Church of the Holy Spirit and we look to the future and pray about the future and reflect on it too. Um, how are we as a community going to welcome new people in? Um, how are we going to evangelize? Uh, these are all kind of concerns and questions that we have here in our 50th year at Church of the Holy Spirit but then in a broader sense those are the questions that um, the Archdiocese of Chicago has for all of the parishes in the Archdiocese and that's been going on for the last five years or so. Um, you'll probably be aware of that many parishes in the Archdiocese of Chicago are being merged or united or formed new parishes and some parishes have been closed uh, in order to strengthen the church that exists uh, and to convert the church that exists into a church which is more outward looking, more evangelizing and certainly more welcoming. So as, uh, as I tell you about this, so you know, I, I, so I ponder that the notion of welcome um, our ministry of welcome and how we exercise it and how we need to think about that more fully uh, in in the months and the years ahead. Uh, in September of this year, from September really until uh, November, um, our parish will be engaged in a process which is called Renew My Church. Uh, we'll come together um, with the parishes who are immediately around us in, as a part of a group and each parish will have a team of people which I will choose uh, from, from here anyway and we will gather and we will reflect and we will look at our strengths and the, a consultant will guide us to think about um, possibilities for the future of how our parish can grow and how it can look and how things might and could be changed. Um, so we'll be involved in a process of discernment which could involve some structural change. Um, obviously no, nobody wants to uh, see Church of the Holy Spirit close and, and, I, and I'm not saying it's going to close but I mean but we are going through a process where we might consider other structural realities like joining with another parish or you know, or form a completely new parish. These are all things which will be on the table for discussion as, as we move forward. Um, so everybody will be involved in that conversation and um, you will be invited to give your opinions and to share. I suppose the thing that the, the, the church is most concerned about is that, that none of us should just be happy to keep everything exactly the same as it is, okay? And that is our tendency as human beings to think, well, I like it as it is, you know, so I don't think we should change anything. And the church is sort of saying, well, yes, but, you know, and for the very reasons that you mentioned, the fact that you don't see many young families at mass, you know, and we're all getting older, um, in order to welcome new people in, then we have to be prepared to make changes. So... I, I give that to you today to reflect on uh, as we move forward, um, just to ponder this notion of, you know, welcome and hospitality. I, I know that uh, CHS is, is known for being hospitable, but I think that we can always do more, uh, and we should do more to increase our welcome. If we are not bringing people in, then there's a question mark. What are we not doing, you know? And as we talk about this in the months ahead, you know, one of the things you'll hear mentioned quite a lot is the expression radical hospitality, you know. So a welcome which isn't just friendly, you know, not just friendly, but a welcome which actually goes after the people <laughs> and, and sort of makes a note of the people who come to us and, and makes them feel like they matter makes them feel like they belong, makes them feel that I have a place here at the table with us at Church of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to be talking more about welcoming and hospitality in those terms, you know, radical hospitality. The first phase of Renew My Church will be about the structural 
look of our parish and the parishes around us. The second phase of Renew My Church, this is going into next year and beyond, is how we as a community become an evangelizing community that looks outward with the intention of welcoming people in. As I say, intentionally, you know, sort of intentionally bringing people in to be part of us here at Church of the Holy Spirit, to be an evangelizing church. Um, and so Mary is a paragon of virtue, as one of great radical hospitality, I think is somebody that maybe we should be praying to, asking her prayers to help us as we move forward. Um, because there will be some conversations in the coming months, you know, which will have to be had and, you know, maybe quite difficult at times. But, um, but the Spirit is with us and so is Blessed Mother, so there's nothing for us to fear. As I say, it's a good opportunity. It comes at the right time, I think, um, in the history of this church on its 50th anniversary to be thinking about these things and thinking, well, how can we bring new people in? And how well do we acknowledge people when they come in? You know, it's all well and good to be a smiling church and a friendly church when people arrive. But when people leave us, you know, how do they feel about it? You know, do they feel that they want to come back? And then do they come back? And how do we make it possible for them to come back? I suppose, you know, if we want people to join us at the table of the Lord and be part of this community, then we have to be able to make space for them uh, to sit with us. Uh, and I, I give that as a metaphor, but I mean, it, it means, you know, that we may have to make some adjustments in order to accommodate people, uh, to be intentionally welcoming, uh, radical in our hospitality and making people feel that they really do matter and that they really do belong here with us um, in the same way you know that Mary bears Jesus and brings Jesus into the world intentionally for each one of us so let's think about that I know that um, you know Maya Angelou uh, she said lots of good things and um, I think she said that people people will forget um, what you said, people will forget what you did, um, but people don't forget how you made them feel, you know. So how do we make people feel uh, when they come in to Church of the Holy Spirit? Do we make them feel like they want to come back? And, and that's, I think, really crucial uh, as we talk about um, a new reality, uh, a new 50 years here, uh, as Church of the Holy Spirit. So I give you that to think about today and again I'll be talking more to you about the various steps that we have to to go through as Church of the Holy Spirit but <clears throat> it'll be a lot of work as we go into the fall uh, and into the winter uh, and then in January the Cardinal uh, will take a decision about our parish, about our community and the parishes around us and from there we will move on okay so um important times uh prayerful times but uh times which are uh, grace-filled full of grace in the same way our blessed mother is so uh, join with me as we pray that we become more open more welcoming and more intentionally radical in our sense of hospitality here at church of the holy spirit uh, talking about our 50th anniversary, uh, tonight we have the May Bash, yes. Our Filipino friends have organized this fundraising dinner dance uh, at Chandler's and, and I will be there at least for a, a couple of hours, you know. Uh, and I look forward to seeing some of you uh, on, on that occasion. If not, I look forward to seeing you at Mass this coming Sunday. Remember, be joyful, keep the faith. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.